what we have here is the road to 5G. Basically telling you a little bit about what will we use 5G for, a little bit on technology and the timeline. Hope that sounds good. So let's start a little bit with the use cases. What will we use 5G for? One important use case is mobile broadband. We know that from the past, I mean, we have that today, but we see the massive increase in traffic. We need a lot of more capacity and data rates here. So that's kind of a standard revolution as we see it. But we also see a lot of new use cases coming up. We see a lot of interest from media industry, not only for delivering video to end users, but also for shooting events like this, when you want to upload it back to the studio. We also see massive machine type communication as an important use case coming up. And this is uh, basically about sensors, lo large amount of sensors spread out in terrain to monitor temperature, traffic flow, whatever. They don't need much data rates, but there are many, many of them. We have a region of 50 billion connections. So we have a large number of sensors. Many of these sensors will be battery powered. So they need to run for a l very long time on battery. You don't want to go out and change your battery. You should just sit there and work. Completely different use scenario than the high data, etc. Another new use scenario we see is critical machine type communication, like the excavator we have over here, where the challenge really is on latency and reliability. If you take the extreme cases, you go down to some factory automation with industrial robots talking to each other. You may need to go down to latency to in the range of one millisecond. And you want to guarantee that more or less with a very high reliability, like five nines. And of course, there will be other use cases that we don't know about yet that will pop up. So the main takeaway from this slide is that 5G is a lot about a wide range of use cases and wide range of requirements. If 4G was just doing mobile broadband at the corner of the screen, 5G is doing all of this. That's the main takeaway. Okay? Yeah. Then we can look a little bit how we're going to address this on the technical side. We cannot really build one network per use case, that, that would be ridiculously expensive. So if we see that we have one infrastructure handling all of this, consisting of not only radio, but also IP infrastructure, cloud, operation management, and network applications. Some applications may need to run close to radio for latency reasons, some can run a little bit further off. And then in the cloud, you can set up multiple logical slices, in the same way as you can set up multiple virtual computers on top of a physical computer. Each slice can be tailor-made for a particular use case. So we have one mobile broadband slice, one machine type slice, one media delivery slice, and so on. That gives you the flexibility you need, because the only thing you know about the future is there will be a lot of unforeseen things there. You need a lot of flexibility. Of course, it should be sustainable. Robust and scalability is important, security important. And then on top of this single network, we run our applications, whatever it could be. Maybe some remote surgery application, Maybe have some car, remote controlled car. Of course, you have a lot of mobile broadband and so on. So really all this range of use cases running on the same network. So key takeaway, 5G is more than radio and we have one network for everything. Then we can take a closer look on the radio here. What do you have in mind for 5G here? Today, we run LTE in existing spectrum. We see that LTE is a very capable technology. So the evolution of LTE can actually address many of these 5G use cases. And that's excellent. And we, can, we should really push it to have a strong LTE evolution. We also see a new radio access coming, operating in new spectrum. As of now, we don't know where that spectrum is. It might be down here, it might be up here. We don't know, it's not yet allocated. So we need to be prepared for anywhere in that range. If you're looking for vast amount of spectrum, very wide bandwidth for extreme data rates, yeah, then we're probably talking about frequency up here in the higher range, which makes it very important to have a tight interworking between LTE and the new radio access. It should really work closely together, much tighter than how it over. It should be like dual connectivity, carrier aggregation type operation. And that leads us to the main takeaway on this slide. 5G wireless access is LTE evolution plus the new radio access, working tighter together. Now I guess you're curious when you can get all this. Sounds great, I hope. Tomorrow. Not really, but almost. We're here now, 2015. We have our testbed up and running. We'll, over the coming years, expand that testbed with more advanced features, going into more large-scale trials, taking into account also the research we're doing. 
and targeting initial commercial deployment in 2020. Just five years from now, so five is coming really close to us. If you take a look at what's going on outside of, of Ericsson, some external things. We can look at the operator community to start with in NDM and they target commercial deployment in 2020 as well, aligned with what we have in mind. And they set the requirements for the, what this should do now. If you look at the standardization side, of course the LTE standardization is ongoing. That is, so the LTE evolution is already ongoing, will continue. The standardization of new, new radio access will start towards the end of this year and run until 2019. And of course, Ericsson, we will bring in what learnings and findings we have into that standardization process to reach this goal of commercial deployment in, in 2020. So that was the timeline. Super. And we can just to wrap off a little bit. This is a global standard. So you need to have global presence to see what's happening in different places and really make sure it's global. It's more than just radio. So you need to have good competence in all, all of these areas. And you need to engage with the industry verticals. You need to understand what is the car industry needing, what can the health sector, what do they need, and how can we help them as a communications company. Okay, so here we have the Ericsson testbed. We have the base station up there in the corner. It runs at 15 gigahertz of carrier frequency. 400 megahertz of bandwidth, 4x4 MIMO. Transmitting down to this terminal we have here. A little bit big for your pocket yet, but we're working on that as well. You see you get more than 5 gigabits per second of data rates. So that's a, to demonstrate the capabilities of, uh, of mobile broadband in, in the 5G area.